In today's episode, I have a Techniques graphic equalizer that uh, dates back to, I guess, about the mid-1980s. This one's got severe distortion on the left channel. This is going to be part one of a two-part video because I do have to source a part. So in this one, we're just going to go through the troubleshooting and confirm which part I need to get. Then we'll get the part on order, and once I get the part, then we'll complete the project. This is an SH8025. This is the graphic equalizer put out by Techniques. It's in bypass mode now. Let's just take a listen to the sound. So in bypass, of course, everything sounds fine. But listen what happens when I put it into EQ mode. Now, now the fault is only on the left channel as I listen to the right channel. As you can hear, the right channel is working. Other than the controls need to be cleaned. The left channel, if we plug that in, all distortion. Sounds like it's having some control. But the left channel itself has got some serious distortion issues. So before I even get into this thing, I'm, I'm thinking possibly a power supply problem, possibly missing one of the voltages to an op amp, but I've never worked on one of these units, so um, we'll find out when I get in the top off this thing. So let's open it up and see what the problem might be on this piece. I bet you guys thought there'd be more in this than there is. It's an empty box. You thought that my Sanjian uh, HD radio was a big empty box. Well, this is even more so, although this is not a deep, my Sanjian receiver was a deeper box than this. This is half the half the depth, but still, it's it's pretty empty. Our fault is definitely going to be over here on the audio board. I think the EQ portion is working because even with all that distortion, we can hear the EQ changing. So I think our problem is going to be over on this board. So let's take a closer look at the signal path on the the. The amplifier board is what this is. This is a couple of op amps is all basically that's on here. Now, if we want to boil this thing down to the circuitry, you basically have two operational amplifiers on this and then the equalizer circuitry. Here are our audio amplifiers, left channel and right channel. So we'll first see if there's a loose connection here. I'm just going to turn it on. Oh, that's bad. Okay, let me get my meter and see if we've got any missing voltages to the two amplifiers because I believe these are op amps. I haven't looked up the number yet, but I'm, I'm sure they're op amps and they're going to have a positive and a negative supply. And of course, if either one of those is missing, you're going to end up with severe distortion like we've got. But the beauty of a design like this is that both channels are identical. So I can do voltage measurements from one chip to the other and I should see similar voltages on both of them. So that makes it easy to find a missing voltage. So let's just uh, take a look at the voltages right now. I'll grab the meter and we'll measure some voltages between the right channel, which is working, and the left channel, which is not. So looking at both of the, uh, the ICs here, I'm just gonna position the meter so you can read it. We've got a 15 volt supply on pin one, which is also on pin one over here. Uh, pin. 5 has a minus 15 volt supply, which I also have a minus 15 volt supply here, and the end pin has also got plus 15 and plus 15. So, but you notice some of the differences here, right? Like pin 2, 0, pin 2 is minus 13, hmm, pin 3, 0, pin 4, minus 1.9. Well, pin five, we know that that's the supply. This IC might be cooked, actually. Pin six, zero. Okay, pin uh, six, minus 13. Pin seven, zero. Pin eight, zero. Pin seven, minus 13. Pin eight is also minus 13, and pin nine is plus 15. So we definitely have some voltage problems on this chip. It, it, could very well be that this chip here is the fault and looking at it right now it looks pretty likely that this chip is the fault 
but I'm going to pull the board out and take a look underneath the board and make sure that there's nothing, there's no problem and we're not getting a voltage coming in due to a short or another component that's gone bad. But at this point, it kind of looks like maybe the TA7559 uh, is bad and we'll have to try and source a new chip. Now, to help us understand how this works a little better, I've, I've gone out and I've got a print and I've highlighted the signal path. And this might seem a little bit confusing here, but I've kind of drawn the path in because it goes through a series of switches. But we don't really need to pay much attention to all of this. This switching here is just for your EQ in and out or for your tape monitor in and out or record EQ or not. When the unit is in no record, EQ and no tape monitor the signal comes in it goes through the switch this switch is your record mode switch it'll pass through the switch uh, where it comes back down here it goes to the tape monitor switch which is in the in the out position comes back up back into this first switch back through here down through here into the EQ switch which is the EQ on and off which in this case it's on because if it's off the signal is just going to be passed back around and sent back to the outputs EQ is on, signal comes up. Passes through R21, which is the 1K resistor, through C11, which is the 25 or 4.7 volt, uh, 25 microfarad cap, and is passed into pin number four of the, and this pen does on the right, of course, pin number four of the TA7559S. This is the buffer for the left, and we've got a buffer for the right over here. From there, the signal goes in through pin number four and comes out through pin number two, where it is passed on to the equalizing amplifier, which is on the front board with all the controls on it. That part's unimportant. Signal goes down to EQ on pin number seven, comes back on pin number 11 here, where it goes right back to the buffer amplifier again, goes in pin number seven of the buffer amplifier and is, is it pin seven? I say pin seven of the buffer and comes back out pin number eight. I believe that's the, the, the path here. Path is into pin number seven. Pin number six on this one is what? It's, uh, it's, it's referenced off of pin number two. Interesting through a resistor here. So we've got a, we've got a feedback loop here from pin number two that goes back into, it goes back into pin number six. If you notice, this is the positive input and the negative input is actually what's fed back from the equalization circuit. So the EQ circuit is going to affect your signals and it's fed into the inverting input on the buffer. So the first thing we need to determine is, is the distortion happening inside this IC? Because of course, when everything's bypassed, all of the circuitry is bypassed as well. Uh, because we could have a failure in one of these components which is causing this IC to be driven over you know, overdriven into distortion. So the first thing we need to determine is is the signal getting to pin four clean? We're going to determine whether the whether the IC itself is what's causing the distortion. More than likely it is, but it certainly could be caused by one of these support components like a capacitor shorting, for example. Could certainly cause the pro the problem. On the return back from pin number eight, this transistor is a muting transistor which just mutes the sound to ground. That happens if you turn on the power and the unit is in the, or turn the power off or turn the power on and the EQ switch is on. Uh, when the power is first turned on or turned off, this transistor is gonna be driven on hard to mute the sound so you don't get any thump or any noises as the power supply is energizing. So that's all this transistor is for. The rest of it takes place in this circuitry here. And I still think it's, it's probably this amp IC that's bad. And what we can do to verify that is I can swap the two of them around because they're identical. So if I can take the right channel amplifier, which I know works, and put it into the left channel circuit and verify that the sound is now clean, then we know that that's the problem and I have to get the IC for it. But let's first of all do some tests to determine whether the problem is ahead of the IC, such as something like a shorted capacitor, which could certainly cause a distorted signal. Okay, let's look at pin number four, which is our input. This is our input signal. As you can see, there's the audio signal going in. And pin number two is the output. Now this is the first, I should be using my analog scope. 
because you'll see this all this noise. It's just severe clipping. Digital scope just really are pathetic. Let me use my analog scope because this is a joke. Okay, here, looking on the analog scope now. Uh, let's look at the input here. Uh, our input is, where is it here? Pin number four, I believe. There's our input. Okay, nice and clean. And uh, there's the output. It looks kind of mess, doesn't it? So, yeah, it certainly looks like the IC is almost getting a, getting a square wave out of it, right? There's our input again. Here's the right channel. So here's the input for the right channel. I should have show you the output. Uh, where's our output? There's our output there, right? That's pin two of the right channel. So the input's looking okay going in. But the output is certainly uh, is certainly distorted from this IC. So everything right now is kind of pointing towards that IC. And we can confirm that by swapping the IC from one side to the other, which is probably the quickest thing to do is just to swap the IC. And that'll verify right there once and for all that that IC is bad. So let's do that. Being a SIP or a single inline uh, package, there's you know this is probably one of the easier of the ICs to remove just to get some solder wick in here and uh, this thing will pop out in a matter of a few seconds. So let's just, I'm just gonna pop out the left one first and we'll stick that one aside and then I'll swap the other one over. And if our distortion goes away, then we know that that's where the problem is. But I think right now, looking at the, the, the waveform that's going in and coming out of this thing, uh, I think that's probably uh, where our problem is, is this IC is just gone bad. So then the, the problem now is finding an IC. Shouldn't be it shouldn't be that difficult, but this is an older unit, so getting one right from like the manufacturer is gonna be impossible because they're not gonna have any stock. So I keep my hopes up that there's an aftermarket one or there's lots of these available, but there's the old IC. You see that's how easy it is to take these things out using solder wick. Do the same on the other one and then we'll just put the other one on this side of the board. I won't put this one, I won't put the dead one back in. I'll just put the good one in on the other side and if it if it clears up the problem, then we know that that's uh, the fault. And then we can proceed to uh, find a replacement IC. I don't know, maybe one of my viewers has got one kicking around. But uh, there's the old, there's the right channel. We'll take the right channel out, just pop it into the left channel. As someone commented, this is how real tech solder stuff in. No third hand. No rubber gloves, just take the bull by the horns basically and no wasting time to set up. No fume hood. What good would it be if you didn't breathe in a little bit of smoke from solder, right? I got my, my doors open, but... Um, Okay, the chip is swapped out. Let's apply power and see whether the distortion problem remains. If it does, then we have to look further. If it's gone, and we're only going to get sound out of one uh, channel now because that's all that's remaining is one channel. But there we go. So now I have to find a TA75. 59s to repair this unit but there's the fault
So for now, the unit's going to go back together, and I got to get a part for it. But once uh, I can locate a part, if I if I can locate a part, I'm sure I'll be able to find one. Once I get the part for this, there will be a part two of installing the new IC. But for now, I can't do much. But I've showed you guys how to diagnose one of these things, and uh, it makes it real easy when you've got the the print the schematic. Makes things super easy. I I certainly suspected the IC right away as soon as I put the meter on there, and was getting uh, funky voltages all over the place when I was seeing all those, you know, seeing all the voltages. Uh, uh, was it was it like minus 14 volts on all those pins? I immediately thought this is going to be the IC that's at fault, and uh, to say some signal checking with the uh, service manual handy confirmed what I suspected that it was in fact the IC. It's kind of an art to putting these things together because the plugs have to line up and you have to plug this plug in here. Once you get the plug aligned the board pops together or the front cabinet pops together and then just a couple screws that hold the front bezel on and then a couple more that hold the top on. So this one's going back together. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll pick up a part two once I uh, track down and get a new part for it. Thanks for watching.